Good afternoon, everyone. This is Horace Pan from Environment and Interior Design Discipline of School of Design, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Today, I would love to share with you the program details of the Environment and Interior Design program. Um, we'd like to do three things today. First of all, I would like to share a bit about the details and requirements, and also some sort of uh, progress that you will go through when you add chance to enter the program from your senior year study. Second thing is we would like to invite uh, our recent graduate to share with you her experience of studying here. The third thing is we'll let you have a Q&A session so that we can give you time and chance to, to ask any question regarding your application. This is Environment Interior Design Program. Um, from the naming of this program, you might know that um, the program focuses on spatial context, but not just about interior spaces. We talk about environment as a whole concept. So the environment can be exterior, can be interior, or even in between. So environment and interior design program is going to be like a very unique uh, focus on the relationship between the in and out within public and private spaces in the context of Hong Kong. Then we would like you to explore, when you come over to this study, we would like you to explore the possibilities of redefining spatial boundary or spatial context. And then we would like you to understand more about the possibilities of how we're going to redefine the value of environment and interior design here. So you see this is actually the uh, four-year program that we've developed for years. This is a senior year program uh, introduction. So um, if you got successfully accepted to the program, you might arrive at year three, and then there will be a kind of um, training and also um, projects and also exploration into the context of interior, environment interior in the first two years already. So what we call junior years. So you might join the program in the middle. So I would like you to also understand our starting point and then you might have a clue about how or to compare with your own study because you might have studied interior design program in other institutes. Spatial design education. So you see we emphasize on the studio culture as a start. We hope that the environment of this school that we emphasize the student to make a lot of spatial study through model, through diagrams, through sketches, no matter it's hand sketches or computer renderings, but in the context of the studio culture, we hope that they can interact with their classmates, with the tutors, and even make good use of the workshops, the labs, and also even doing field trip study on the culture. So we hope that from the year one, um, this is a kind of freshman experience that we create for the whole program. And you see, we try to start the whole training from a small scale, proximate scale to human body. From this, we have kick off the whole journey for each student. So this is a studio example. You see the body ergonomic narrative and space studio project that we try to ask students to explore, to research the possibilities of a device, a body device, a body extension to make them understand well about the usage of the space starting from their own tactile feeling on the programs, on the materials and even on different possibilities not just in the interior environment but also in the exterior and the streetscape and the urban context especially in Hong Kong. So you see we have a lot of keywords here. You see we talk about domestic narratives. We talk about exchange bodies. And even we ask the students 
to come up with a kind of interesting mechanism and then ask the student to think about just like a body architecture think about the possibilities of how can make the device multifunctional so you might see some examples here our past studio student projects some of them would like to explore the devices in hawker stands um, get inspiration from the clever system that you find in Mong Kok, in Sam Shui Po. It's a very, very local culture, very local context that we can generate an interesting spatial relationship, spatial flexibility for the different functions. But we're not talking about a very mega scale at that time. So we hope that they will understand the ergonomics, understand dimensions, understand the structure and understand the details even. And then you can also see the context of the whole um, Hong Kong urban context also inspire students to think about whether those daily fun objects, whether those daily activities or programs that they meet every day. So they can also find a way to redefine, to redevelop, even to upcycle the usage of the wastage of these fun materials. You see the student even use the canvas and um, some kind of ropes and also is talking about how they can create a temporary structure on the street. And some of them are even want to explore on a more artistic approach. Uh, you see this kind of sequential diagrams of how a student make use of this body architecture thing to express some sort of message how the students will think about the different composition and even uh, programs that generate from this very little dummy uh, that put on top put on his or her body so uh, apart from the first year experience and also um, learning more about the possibilities and context of the street uh, we asked the student in the year two to come up with a spatial system study. So this is a living typology as a start to learn about how students can explore or study on the surroundings. So you see this year two studio is called cultural and typological hybrids. And this is a very interesting project that we asked the student to think about uh, different interior typologies, which means they would need to think about the different functions and programs and even usages of those devices. Now you see also the linkage between year one and year two is we hope that the students were starting from approximate scale, tactile and also made by hands even to come up with some sort of different structures and devices to let them explore the different industries or even different trades uh, how we can create new functions within that context or even help to develop or improve the efficiency or improve the life for different people. Works of life of people is actually what we call user center design starting point. So you see this technological complexity, uh, we ask the students to, to, to really explore the structural possibilities of very, very simple material like plywood, like MDF, like uh, um, metal sheet, and even um, some sort of um, recycle. Um, uh, this is actually the foam board and also uh, uh, paper. So you see all these things, they come up with a study. They also will need to plot out one to one or one to five or one to 10, the details of this building structure in Hong Kong. This is uh, one of the examples that we asked the students to study the steel houses in, uh, um, in Hong Kong. The steel houses basically is in Lantau Island. So you see Tai O is the site that they um, gone through this spe very specific types of living condition in Hong Kong. And the student even will visit the site, visit and interview the users. And then the students will later on from hand sketches, put it into the computer, put into the uh, a very accurate 
uh, structural uh, calculation on how they can redevelop the system, the spatial system, and input some new program. Adaptive reuse is the keyword that we try to ask the student to think about. And the student will also, uh, across the border, many years um, experience that um, we encourage the student to go over to uh, mainland China to think about to see the possibilities of learning from this uh, southern China uh, architectural um, context. So you see, this is the one-to-one uh, -one study also. To think about what is the key materials, very, very vernacular structure architecture that they have found there, and also let them to explore about what is the uh, new possibilities of using the heritage uh, knowledge. So after this uh, basic understanding of different cultures, different materiality functions, and proportion and scales, we will encourage students to go to the year three, which is the year that we will enter. So in year three, we will give them a broader context, larger scale, more complex program to consider. So basically, this is a year three starting uh, uh, as, a, as a journey that you can enter together with us. So you will get into this program here. And this is a studio that called Critical Urban typo Typographies. The definition of the territory and the city through its interiors. Uh, we will ask the student to pick a story and also even we'll ask the student to even explore the architectural tectonics services, spatial design and the supportive technologies to think about a building system. When we call this thing building system, we are talking about not just about one unit, we're talking about the whole high-rise building. And then we will talk about the interrelationship between different levels, between in-out, the facade, and the interior environment. And also, in a larger scale, as an urban component, we talk about the regional relationship. So the students will have chance to explore and record and do research on the region, on the zone. Say for example, we will have a lot of um, students talk about how they can redevelop the old region or even the old buildings, uh, tenement buildings to high-rise building or part of the high-rise buildings, talking about how they can redevelop the usage. Another adaptive reuse kind of approach is happening. But in a more abstract sense. So you see these sketches, the diagrams, and also the manipulation of the study models are very architectural. So we can use a lot of architectural approach, architectural theory, and architectural languages to adopt to interior spaces. So this is going to be like a crossover between the boundary of the traditional definition of architecture study and interior design study. So you see here, a lot of representation of their thoughts, of the design, make use of borrow from uh, the diagrams, a spatial analysis, and also you see the study models, uh, especially when you look at these images of the right hand side, you see the series of study models is talking about spatial tectonics. So you see all these whether they are like using very simple form or very simple material like paper, that the student can generate the spatial com composition and even the texture of these surfaces, no matter it's vertical or horizontal. So um, to tell the stories about purely about the forms or purely about the skin of, of, of all those urban contexts, it's got to be like uh, a, a chance for them to explore something really interesting and without a constraint of just focusing on very pragmatic uh, brief of pragmatic uh, client requirements. So this is also we want to free up their minds first. So you see later on when we have this kind of uh, in-depth uh, understanding on the possibilities of breaking the boundary between interior and the architecture context. We hope that in the year four, which is the final year uh, for the students to explore their own interest and their own focus, so that this year four is talking about the independency, is talking about their own 
choices of direction of further doing the capstone project, of course, they have to go through a lot of research, what we call capstone research in this part. And then later on, they may come up with a capstone uh, uh, project later on, their proposal later on. But in fact, but before the capstone project, we will have this very important studio called Cooperative Studio. This is a project, or this is a kind of uh, tradition that School of Design is really, really strong into, asking students to come up with a multidisciplinary team, interior design student together with product design student together with communications design student together with advertising, social design student even, to form a multidisciplinary team for a real client project in the start of year four. So you see a lot of real project brief, real situation, real challenges is waiting for them to tackle. So you see this co-op uh, studio is last for nine weeks. And then we ask the student to really, uh, from the conceptual uh, uh, thinking to this kind of uh, realization to good communication to the client and then create new value for the clients. Um, we have a lot of examples that being realized. Uh, lately, we have a project uh, for the environment protection department of Hong Kong government. And then um, we have successfully implemented the design scheme into a licensing agreement even. So the students, uh, after the studio, they can even join the team to realize the project together with the client. So this is going to be like um, a very good uh, re reference for the students for sure, and a good experience for the students. And after that, uh, year four will let them lead into their own independent study on their final capstone project. So you see, because we are environment interior design, so definitely we hope the student will focus in the more contextual relationship between human spaces and the structures. So you see the year four open studio here, a lot of open questions being asked to the students. So the context or the issues that we ask them to focus on will be quite different. Some of them will more like focus on space planning, urban redevelopment in a mega scale context, or some of them we will really would love to study different typologies of, of exterior or interior spaces, living spaces, say for example, and also currently because of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, 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 situation, the, the students will really love to talk about health, public health issues in relation to spatial system enhancement uh, for Hong Kong people. So this is going to be like more social oriented projects. And even some of the students will also like to focus on material study, structural study. So the interest actually like they have a very variety, big varieties in terms of their approaches. So we will form different teams and uh, different tutors with ex different expertise will lead the whole project starting from research to the proposal stage. So you see a lot of different examples over the past few years here. Um, in our context, we will even ask the student to come up with mock-ups, come up with the mock-up like this. The left-hand side, you see the top left-hand corner, this one. This is a mobile, very interestingly, it's a mobile living device for poor people in Hong Kong. So you can you know, ride on the bicycle kind of device around the city. So this is kind of a one-to-one -one, a mock-up that the student come up with at the end at the final presentation. And um, we have a lot of different students also doing some sort of uh, more uh, conceptual thinking in terms of the synopsis of the future of Hong Kong. So you see different storylines and also even different scales, study models. And the final presentation will, uh, in our context, we hope that the critique uh, will form part of the training. So we will invite a lot of external uh, reviewers and external critics to come over to the studios in terms of interim, in terms of final presentation to give good opinions and comments to each student. And you also see some other approach uh, lately. We have students focus on 
Very interestingly, it's all about the graphics. You know, it's, about, it's about narrative spaces. It's, it is not just about spatial diagram or models that you can expect, but also they will talk about a lot of like, illustration on the future or some of the story of the spaces that we can generate through graphics. So you, this is what we call color wallpaper project. And also this is an animated type topography project that done by two different students. And of course, we can also have a lot of uh, emphasis on how can we present spaces in two dimensional media. So you see these diagrams, you see these illustrations, it's, all, it's not just about conventional, you can imagine all those um, you know, perspective renderings, uh, commercial uh, models, and also, and also very um, realistic kind of a representation of spaces, but it is more abstract and conceptual kind of representation of their thoughts, of their uh, imagination. So we emphasize on all of these elements. And this one is a very good example of a uh, winning, uh, this is our award winning project uh, from a uh, recently graduate from our program. So you see this is a future scenario of the co-living, co-working environment in Hong Kong. So you see a lot of different units, different usage of space, interior, exterior, public, common spaces, private nook points, from the street to the rooftop. So you see these programs even can summarize uh, the understanding and even redefining the preconception of the student before they enter the program. You can see what they will come up with at the end of the program that they really open the mind in terms of how can they create different spatial contexts for their users in the future. This is what, uh, what we would like to uh, let the student to uh, explore. And we also, of course, we have a lot of, this is a university program, so we have a lot of electives and other courses to support the design studios. Then we also have different uh, um, visits. We have different guest lecture that support all this study. And then we have um, extracurricular activities and events uh, supported by a lot of industry partners. Uh, we have field trips, we have site visits, and of course, uh, if we have a lot of um, um, projects that have a lot of outside uh, external uh, advisors to give comments to the students, then that will be even better. Then we have this, finally, uh, we have a lot of interesting uh, outcomes over the uh, 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 past few years. I just want to flip through it and then you can see uh, how interesting can be uh, in terms of the preconception that we already have in our mind that interior design can be different. So you see all these things. Of core structure, uh, like I mentioned, we have this four year program and you will enter senior year program here, right? And in the year three, uh, one more thing that um, I would like you to know is we have this exchange program. So we have chance for you to apply for um, being that, you know, you can visit uh, another university that we are like partners, then you can go to Europe and in the Asia countries and to study for one semester. And then even we have this scholarship, um, internship program is also a chance for you to open your eyes uh, when you do the practice learning by doing kind of thing apart from the, our um, school a program that you also will have a lot of chances to have real life experience in this program. So there is a lot of uh, school uh, of design links here. Of course we have this school of design general link but you also can see we have this program introduction process and then you have this portfolio guidelines before you prepare your portfolio you might take, need to take a look and then the school of design prospectus and we have this uh, QR code. If you can scan it, you can uh, do it now. And then uh, you can directly link to ENI Facebook page. 
and then we have our own, um, you know, Behance account. So this is actually a quite interesting kind of uh, archive of all the studio projects and all the students' works there. So do have a look when you have time. And this is uh, Instagram. We also have ENI Inst Instagram account, and then you can also scan this QR code, and then you can you know visit our page. Uh, this is the faculty members. We have a variety of uh, faculty members to take care of the programs. And then we hope that at the end of the day, we can be this uh, changing the nature of ID profession in Hong Kong, China, and Asia. Then this is the summary of what I've just mentioned. Uh, you see this is this core skills, and this is the um, spatial environment and materialization. other keywords that you might need to know and you see this is what we call process 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 uh, we count on design process more than just the beautiful outcomes so this is a fully training on the design process in terms of the spatial context is going to be like quite um, very comprehensive and of course we have this studio culture that I already mentioned in the first beginning and then you have this uh, critique and review sessions supporting all these things is the language study we use English as the uh, uh, teaching and learning language officially in uh, school design and these are all the uh, common uh, you know uh, requirements that when you have chance to study here you will need to uh, pay attention to So, big welcome to everyone. I hope that you can have more understanding on the program here and hope that you will uh, have a good preparation for your application to our program. Thank you. Now it's time for uh, sharing, right? Uh, another sharing uh, from our recent graduate. Uh, her name is Kitty, Kitty Lee. She is a very, very good graduate, I have to say that, because she, she got a good reputation on her uh, final capstone project. Uh, I would like to pass this time to Kitty, let her to share her experience in her senior years to you. Um, a recent graduate student from EID. And so let's have an introduction first. I've studied in Hong Kong Community College for one year before I entered PolyU School of Design. And um, I'm in a one year, I came into PolyU in year one and I have completed the four years of studies. And between my studies, I have an internship program in AB Concept and Recently, I'm working in Moser. So um, I'm a student from associate degree to move on to a degree studies in School of Design. And I found out that there is a huge difference between HKCC and School of Design because this is prepared bring for us to go to the universities and the costs are usually focused on training techniques and produce beautiful projects and outcomes for our portfolios. But what's different in School of Design is that um, EID is mostly aimed to train, aimed to not just about the outcome, but guide student creative development in spatial design. We are not just only studying about interior design, but also about questioning about the space. For example, here are some of my project questionings about the relationship of, of human and space, questioning about how the spatial arrangement will affect the ex experience, and how the lighting and technology will create a space as well as my final year project is questioning about how religion architecture will 
develop a mental healing pavilions. The setting of School of Design is kind of um, not just focused about what we produce, but is more um, talking about the design process and the design concept. Sometimes it will be a bit confusing with the um, with the program, but when the process being the process through the thinking, developing and exploring, it will always lead us to get out of our comfort zone and develop an unexpected project. So when you are preparing the portfolio for AID, I have three suggestions. So uh, most importantly, you need to include your interior design project where you have done in your school or your workplace. And you need to include your sketches, design process and design concept inside your interior project. Because I think that um, all those, the renderings and outcomes always looks very good and perfect in your projects, but the sketches and your design concept is unique. What you can show in your project is the story behind your interior and your concept between and the concept behind your whole design. So you must include your design process in your portfolio. The second thing I suggest to put inside the portfolio is the spatial design process. As you know, our program is called environment and interior design because um, this subject is not just focusing about interior design project. It's also included about spatial and environment discipline, including architect, landscape, or even the urban design projects. So you can um, prepare some spatial questioning project or prepare some architecture element studies that you are really passionate about to show your passion towards this subject. The last thing I think is uh, important is your personal hobbies. You can put some your photo, your um, photograph, painting, or sketchbook inside your portfolios because your spatial project may your spatial project may present how your technique and how your design thinking skills. But putting your personal hobbies inside your portfolios can make the tutors know more about you, know more about um, what your personalities and who you are. So I would like to share some learning experience in my um, four year studies. Actually, the design, the design program is focused on um, studio with the elective studies. And in the senior design studio, it's mostly focusing on research with the theories and concept. Um, here is one of my projects that I've done in my school years, and is an angle. In the first stage, I have a um, I have a research studies in a China village. It's about how the ergonomics works with the housing and how the users will use the housing. So uh, as a group project, we have carefully studied how the, how the user um, experience in the house and different parts of zoning. And we have drawn a conclusion of this image. And after I've come back to Hong Kong, I start to um, developing my own, I start to study about my own human dimension of ergonomics. I study about myself and my movement and use my, my human dimension. I would like to um, study how the, how the volume and how the volume and ergonomics can tackle with the space. In School of Design, we usually um, develop our designs through developing models and exploring and keep modifying our design concept by drawing sketches and um, presenting to our tutors. And in this stage, I'm 
converting my human ergonomic studies into a housing design. So I have, um, I have firstly put the ergonomic studies um, inside each zoning and use the changing level to combine all the zoning together and develop a housing. As you can see from the models, here are many different models studying about how the different levels and how the activities associate with the space. Here is the final outcome of my ergonomic house, and we will have different uh, uses of different songs. And by designing the human activities of the specific users, the house will be tailor-made like custom for the users. And when we reach uh, year four, we will have a cooperative project with all the different stream of design students. And my group project is focusing on Kowloon Park Fitness Trail. And we aim to redesign the fitness trail by um, gathering different stream of design students. And for this project, we will have a real client, and the client will be DISI DC, and it will lead us through the whole process. For this project, communication design students will um, work closely together with us by designing the refinding and how the new facilities, the um, logo designs and for environment interior students, we will work together with the product design to redesign the um, playground facilities and how the fitness facilities will fit in the fitness trail for different age group. And we will finish the whole project together as a team. And it's a very, very valuable experience because for this project, we are having a real client and we need to present it in the end of semester. And we have a chance to work with different stream of people and we can exchange our experience together. For my final year project, um, is also in year four, semester one, we will first start by a group research. And the group research project I'm focusing on religion Silla. We have done a research of the top 20 religions in the world, and we are carefully designed about the, we carefully research about the history, the background, and how the architecture elements, like the openings, columns, um, ceilings, how they work together to create a religion Silla and compare the differences between um, all the different religions. So after the group research, it will bring, in, bring us into the individual research. We will narrow down our topic and my topic will be narrowed down into a cathedral settings. Like um, I'm studying about frying butchers and reef folds and how does the reef folds will have an effect on frying butchers and what main design what main architectural structure and user experience better will be most important to create a cathedral atmosphere. I have studied the background and history of the cathedrals, and I have taken out the cathedral elements like the folds and the art and the um, spatial arrangement of the cathedral. I study about the ratio and how it creates the space for the people inside to have a um, have a religion's activities. After the research part, then we will proceed into semester two and we will start doing our design concept part. In our design concept part, I will take the research from semester one as a basis to develop my own project. And I've taken out the folds and the frying virtues as one of my main design elements. As after I have researched about the design element, I found out that cathedral actually acts as a space as for the salvation happening, and people can actually reach a higher level of reflection through the architecture elements. So I have developed my own 
rules of perfect of um, pavilion settings. So when people are passing through different zoning, like the entrance, transition, and main space, they will experience different spatial um, user experience. Like um, they can open up their view to um, experience the um, relaxation. And can show you a bit about what my outcome of this project is actually, I have designed three different pavilions in the transaction place in Hong Kong. The first one is a pavilion in the alleyway. It focuses using the art and folds with the central treatments to provide a treatment plan to heal the daily anxiety. And it will be a walkover experience in Causeway Bay. And the second site will be a inner self pavilion in Central is at the Ladder Street. It will focus on using the color treatment in the Lighter Street to provide a space for users to come by and relax themselves in the pavilions. And it will also have a light mode because it's a public space. For the last pavilion, it will be located in Chim Sao Chai. And because it's a transposition um, system center, many people will passing by and they can come inside to have a relax and contemplation. And the pavilion will be near the harbor and the, and the users can enjoy the whole harbor field and calm down themselves and enjoy their time inside. Apart from the video, I have developed a set of different a set of sessional perspective to describe the details of my designs. It will include the details treatment plan of each step. For example, this, this in the self pavilions in Leather Street, it will locate different treatment plans for each location and how the users can prepare themselves to have their mental activities in each sport. And I have also included some details and the color treatments inside the posters. Apart from the design concept, the another stage is about the detail design. We will have the spatial details design in um, the last stage after our design concept, and we will present our spatial embodiments of how the design is really works. As I have designed three pavilions, so I have mapped out the details of my pavilions. Although it looks like a architecture project, but actually it's mostly focusing on some interior elements design. For example, I have designed a 2D world details. When people passing through, they can experience the um, effects of the patterns. And I have also designed a skylight with patterns. So I will indicate the design details inside each pavilion in this drawing. So after my learning experience, there are also some extracurriculum activities and events happens in these four years. I have the internship experience in AB Concept because um, and it provides me a very thorough internship, internship experience because actually um, I believe that in our um, studies, we are hardly really and get in touch with material artists and we have um really hard to learn about how the industry is really work in the real world but having the opportunities to work in an internship program it allows us to learn about how the industry 
flows, how we prepare different material boards and wood boards in real life. And I'm very lucky that um, School of Design and Polio have provided me a um, many opportunities to go outside the school to learn about um, these professions. For example, I've gained an AB concept traveling scholarship to Australia. It's a study trip to study about the um, architecture fusions, about the modern and traditional buildings in Australia. And I have participated in an exchange program in Edinburgh when I'm in um, year two summer and is a program that allowed me to study in Edinburgh University for one year, for one semester. And um, even, I, I'm not sure if you can participate in exchange program when you are senior entry, but there will be a overseas internship program that um, PolyU is also offerings for us to join. It will be an eight to 10 weeks overseas internship program. And you can also experience a living in other country and it, will, and it will let you to know more about the real local culture in a different cities. And, and from an interior design, also allows me to have a study trip in a Chinese China old village. It's called Xinan Brook, and we will have a five-day trip in there to study about um, how the architecture elements in China, and we will bring back a design concept from the bridge from the village to our own studios to process a design project, and. In every year, there will be a program called Moji Q in EID, and it, uh, it will bring a group of EID students to China, mainland China, to participate in a, um, I think it's a bridge building program, so they can participate in, in a um, real life building project in China. And I also have two other experience with University of YMCA. They provide um, sponsorship for us to have a service trip to different country each year. And I have joined the two year, one year to Berlin and another year to Cambodia. It provides me a experience that I can um, really have interactive with the local people we can talk together and I can experience the how the local culture will change the living and the hot and the um, how the place is doing. So here will be a QR code for my Instagram if you want to know me more. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty, for sharing your valuable experience. Little time for QA now. Any advice on portfolio? I see the first question here. Uh, you know what? For arts, uh, environment interior design program, the advice on portfolio is very simple. Uh, we hope that you're not just giving us the beautiful renderings, the beautiful outcomes in the portfolio. We are not just want to see the outcomes. We want to see the, the thinking process. You better show us you have the following skills, capabilities. Um, in your portfolio, you should show us your research, your understanding of the context, understanding of the site, understanding of the user needs, understanding of um, the, the, the possibilities. And we have to also see your conceptual development. So it's going to be like a very thorough uh, record of your sketches and also of your study programs, uh, diagrams, and then our study model, uh, be it photographs, be it movies, um, and then later on, as a result, then you can show us the final outcome, your beautiful pictures and rendering and models. So um, we hope that you can have a very comprehensive, it doesn't need to be a lot of numbers of projects. You might be very selective to put into your portfolio, show us the best one or two projects, and then uh, we will have a very clear understanding 
on your ability, on your suitability to our program already. If you want to apply for this major, would we need to submit our works? What kind of works? Uh, yes, this is a simple, some similar question of the previous one. We will need you to submit your portfolio. Uh, so in the portfolio, you should be very selective. Uh, show us your uh, whole comprehensive process of um, your design projects that you've gone through. Uh, okay, one more thing is do not just show us your school work. We hope also to see your personality and also see your uh, private interest, personal interest. Uh, if you have a lot of internship experience or traveling experience and all other kind of things that relate to uh, your uh, personal study, um, please put it into your portfolio. And one more thing is uh, I, I have to uh, let you know that if we look for personalities and we will look for different um, you know, um, chemical reactions when we get a uh, senior year student combining our uh, original uh, you know, year one and year two student with you, there must be some reason that we include you into the group. So uh, show us your uh, other interests, your other characteristics of, you, of yourself. It's going to be helpful. So please also include your personal journal, uh, your personal sketchbook, your process book, plus your own personal recording of your discovery. So it's going to be more helpful uh, for you to stand out from your compet competitors. Okay, another question here. About the portfolio, would you suggest we provide a hand sketch or some sketch by AutoCAD or SketchUp? Well, honestly speaking, I hope you can combine all these other media or you include hand sketches, you include uh, AutoCAD drawing and also SketchUp uh, uh, you know, uh, drawing uh, together. Because uh, if you can only use computer to draw, then it's going to be like uh, not, not an ideal situation because a lot of th times that when we practice this uh, discipline, uh, you know, when we do design, uh, we definitely use hand sketch first. So it's better for you to show us you have strong hand, hand sketch skills together with your computer skill. So both, please. Uh, next question, what is the graduate's future career? What kind of job I can take? Wow, what a good question. Uh, Career is very good, I have to tell you, because uh, um, interior design, yeah, in the industry, we call it interior design, is the most, um, I would say, popular choices uh, in the region. Uh, I mean, when you get graduate, uh, you can compare your possibilities in Hong Kong and even in mainland China. Um, you see a lot of uh, companies, even they do communication, even they do product design, even they do architecture design, they will also will love to do interior design projects. That means something. So interior design is very broad. If you say you want uh, to further develop your career in this context, um, I would say you also need to equip with knowledge on product design. Because when we do interior, you have a lot of choices uh, on the proprietary items of furniture, lighting, soft furnishings, this is something that more relate to product. However, you also will need to tackle a lot of projects that tackle the uh, structural changes, regulations, massive structure like uh, if you have project doing shopping center, hotel developments, residential development, large scale public projects, together with other consultants, engineers, architects, lighting consultants, um, you know, quantity surveyors, so you have to equip with the other side of those skill set that more relate to architectural knowledge. So this actually the combining the both sides will be, will, will be good for you. Um, yeah, you have a lot of different options and choices. So it's a good choice. Another question here. In addition to our portfolio, what do you suggest us to prepare before attending interviews? Um, yeah, I just mentioned that you have to also include, after, uh, apart from your portfolio, so-called coursework, uh, school projects, please include your personal journey. P that means your personal discovery journey, which means you should come up with a sketchbook 
that include your recordings, your sketches, your photos, your uh, writings on you know your 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 favorite um you know uh, spatial projects or even uh, not about space. It can be like theater works. It can be movies. It can be music. It can be um, uh, multimedia projects that you like. So show us your interest to us. So it's gonna be like uh, 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 telling us more about your edge. It's very important. This question is for Kitty. Can Kitty share tips with us too? Oh, um, for me, um, I would suggest you to really bring your own sketchbooks for your interviews because um, usually the sketchbooks will show your sketches, your design concept, and um, some of your diagrams that represent um, how you think and how you process. And because um, it's more important to show that um, you are really thinking the design by yourself and show the process. Um, some of the, and also I believe that if you are going to the interview, you need to bring your um, sketchbook and your hard copy of portfolios. And um, I think that's enough. You need to have some Sinatra project that can show your key major and your strength. Mm. Okay, thank you, Kitty. Well, it's time to wrap up this panel. Uh, you know, um, I will, I will, I would like to um, conclude this introduction to our program with a uh, suggestion. Um, studying environment interior design is quite a uh, good experience because. Um, you have to learn a lot of different aspects of spatial, non-spatial context things. Uh, innovative mindset, a good communication skill is a must. No matter it's a 2D or it's a, no matter it's a 3D uh, medium, that you've got to further develop your uh, uh, style or skills here. And um, and hope that um, you can enjoy the program and then you can explore and redefine this profession together. So thank you for your uh, joining uh, this uh, session today.